Okay, so welcome to this session. This is something called Graduate and Postdoctoral Success Career Stories. And I have invited Pete Eccles to come and discuss what Southern Teachers Agency is like, and also more importantly, how he attained his position, what he learned along the way, and how he might be able to help you with your next steps. So I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Pete. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Voss, for the warm invitation to come speak. I'm delighted to be here and I'm looking forward to all of the questions. Um, I'd love to tell you a little bit about myself, who I am, and how I got to where I am right now. I, I definitely identify as a musician, but currently I work as a placement counselor and Texas school agent for a company called Southern Teachers. So to tell you a little bit about from where I came from, uh, when I was in school, I didn't necessarily have a direction or a path that I wanted to study, but I knew that I really enjoyed music. And my main instrument is euphonium. If you've never seen one, it's this little thing right here. It's like a small tuba. And I started taking lessons when I was in school. And I really treated that as my job. My friends were involved in sports and involved in, in work after school. And I treated music as if it was my job. And I practiced every day for about two hours after school. Knowing that it was something that um, I liked, I made sure that I was as active and involved as possible. And what that meant is that I was playing in as many ensembles as I could but it was also a chance for me to work with many different adults. It was a wonderful opportunity to learn how to speak with adults and interact with them in a setting outside of just school. When I wasn't involved in music, I was involved in the scouts and that was pretty much my other job. Nights, weekends, and even whole summers. And again, one of the great things about this experience was it was more networking. I got to work with so many different adults from tons of different professions and it was just a lot of fun. I, was a, I worked at a summer camp for nine summers. I was the director for five of those. I even got my first teaching job because of a connection at that summer camp. So here I am at my Eagle Scout ceremony and here are some of us on staff. That's me right there in the middle trying to build a pyramid. So when it was time for me to go to school, I actually ended up winning a scholarship to go to school for music. And I knew that I didn't I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew that music was something that I loved and something that I was passionate about. So I went to school as a classical music performer and teacher. My degree is in music education. And I knew that I wanted to be as well-rounded of a musician and as a person as possible. So again, I was as active and involved as possible, playing as many styles. Um, I wanted to specialize but diversify uh, my interests. I took about 20 credits every semester, sometimes more, but at least four ensembles each semester. And the idea was that's all about just being involved in as many different things as possible. And the real reason for all of that is because I knew when I was in college, hey, right now, these are my professors, but pretty soon they're going to be my peers. And for me in music, these are people that I will be playing with in ensembles or possibly auditioning against for things. This is my network. And so now is the time to start building my network. And uh, to that end, I also made sure that I was involved in as many non-school opportunities. I played in a semi-professional wind ensemble and chamber music, would play at weddings as much as possible, and even some local other pop bands. Here I am right there. Here I am with the marching band as well. So after I graduated from college, um, I, I had some interesting music things happen to me. I attended this party in 2016, and it was a party of musicians with uh, a bunch of folk musicians. And they all brought their instruments and they all started playing. And I realized, I, while I was extremely trained in music, this wasn't something that I had any idea about. I couldn't really communicate with these musicians. And I was 
an incredibly trained musician. So I decided, you know, I, I still have so much to learn. I'd like to shift my focus in learning and, and see what else I can learn. And I thought to myself, how can I do that? I have no idea what I'm going into there, but I've come to realize that everything that I've learned in music is really transferable to this new style of music. And I found this is true outside of music as well. Some life tips that I've learned from music that are transferable everywhere else. Number one, just show up and be nice. People like happy people. And if you can show up and be nice, that's half of the battle right there. If you can learn someone's name, I guarantee you they will learn your name. If you greet them by name, they'll learn your name. And that's gonna be important because that's gonna make you memorable. Something I've always found important is think about what is your problem and what is not their problem. Make it work. I was asked for one of my first uh, gigs I was ever asked for in this non-classical world was I was asked to be in a polka band of all things. They said, hey, we have a polka gig coming up and we need a tuba player. I didn't own a tuba. I didn't have a tuba, but I said, yes, I'll make it work. I'll get the tuba and I'll be there. And sure enough, that's what happened. As with so many things in life, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So now is the time to be building that credit with people, build that networking. You want to be known as the person who's going to be reliable, who shows up early, who's friendly, who remembers their names, who's punctual and prepared. So here I am at that first gig. Here's that tuba that I had to borrow. And here I am with one of the bands I play in now. So I got my first teaching job right out of school. Um, my degree was in music education. I knew I wanted to start teaching and I had a super interesting experience. I ended up working at a private school. My entire education was public education all the way up through university. And I started working at a private school and I thought, oh my goodness, this is, this is so interesting. I hope I'll do all right here. And I loved it. It was a wonderful world to be in. I stayed there for five years and I got to see such uh, progress in the students and the music program. We really built the program from the ground up. When I got there, the high school band had seven students in it. And when I left, there were 38, which in a school of about 175, that's a pretty significant amount of the school. Band, chorus, orchestra, middle school, high school, I did it all and it was so much fun. And as if that wasn't enough, my wife and I also lived on dorm. This was a boarding school. And so we were dorm parents to uh, 18 boys from around the world. So this is me and my wife. This is the other set of dorm parents. This is our dorm that we lived in with our, our boys from all the way around the world. It was so much fun. And here's a picture of some of the music department uh, when we got to do a trip to, uh, to Germany and we're at the grave of Johann Sebastian Bach. So that teaching position ended pretty abruptly due to COVID-19. Unfortunately, the school had to lay off pretty much all of their teachers, myself included. So for the first time in my life, I was at the point where I was forced into something different. The plans had changed and I was not prepared for this. And I applied and got a job at Southern Teachers Agency and I love it. It's incredible. It, uh, it was COVID related and I was nervous about going into this different field. I, I'm not trained for, for the, the office life. I was trained to do music. So I thought, am I gonna be okay? And just like earlier, I found that so many of those things that I've learned are all transferable. All of those life skills from everything else, it really comes across the board. Now, a lot of what I do is I help teachers find jobs at private schools, and I help those private schools fill their open positions. So a lot of what I do involves looking at resumes and helping out with interviews. So I thought it would be a, a nice thing if we could take a look at some strong resume things and some interviewing tips that I've learned that I wish I'd known a couple years ago and maybe can help some of you all. Ah, yes, I review resumes and conduct interviews. So a couple strong things, some things that make a resume strong, some things that I like to see. Uh, 
Let me first say, I'll preface all of this with use your own judgment. Um, I can't speak for every job. My background is in music and music education, but I, I know a lot about teaching positions in general. If you uh, are coming to apply for a job and there's something that you really feel in your gut, you want to do it this way, trust your instincts and you know your training, you probably know what's going to be best. That being said, all of these things I'm about to tell you, maybe you already know some of these things. If so, wonderful. I would encourage you to help others around you. I have found that some of these things I thought most people knew, uh, we see some things that I, I wish maybe someone had told them about. So if, if you know all of these things, offer your help to friends. If they're uh, working on a resume, offer to proofread or, or test some, uh, some test uh, interview questions with them. So some personal things that I like to see that make a strong resume. Number one, know your audience. Um, I, I think it's important for you to be able to personalize your resume. Uh, a resume for a teaching position should look pretty different than a resume for an electrical engineer or mechanical engineer or a business person. It should look a little different depending on which job you're applying to. And I'll show you some examples and you can kind of move things around as that, as that would be fit. Think about what's relevant, include that information at the top. There are some general rules in resume and you want the most recent thing to be at the top and the most visible. If it's more relevant, maybe think about moving that around. And again, I'll show you an example of that as well. Keep it simple, two pages max. I've seen some 16 page resumes and I'll tell you that People aren't reading all 16 pages of the, all those 16 pages. People assume that you have to beef up your resume and I'm here to tell you, you do not. Keep it simple. That's going to be helpful for you, for you in the long run. A little bit of personality is fine, but remember the resume is not the opportunity to show them your personality and what a creative and brilliant, beautiful person you are. Save that for just a second. I'll show you how you can do it, but the, person, the, the resume is really more about showing your accomplishments, who you are, get that foot in the door. How can you show yourself a little bit? Well, so many resumes are being shared electronically these days. Uh, I would say don't hesitate to include a hyperlink. If you have a website for yourself, or if you wanted to record a quick video resume, hyperlink that in there, and that's where you can show people a little bit about who you are. A couple pet peeves, a couple, please don't. Uh, the skills. Um, a lot of people try and list all of these skills that they have on their resume. I, there's kind of an assumption that you're already a strong communicator and that you have technical skills and you know how to use a computer. I would say maybe leave those off unless it's a very specific thing for a sp very specific job. Um, maybe some, uh, some software that you're familiar with or, or, or something that really gets specific. Otherwise, we assume that you're a strong communicator and that you're a friendly person and have a collaborative nature. Greek life in general, the rule of thumb is unless it's been some hugely significant leadership position, tend to leave that off. Um, if you've been held a, like a statewide leadership, I, I would definitely say put that in there. Or if you know that it's a specific position and has Greek life that's related to that profession, then sure, feel free to throw that in there unprofessional email addresses. I have seen so many unprofessional email addresses and I've emailed people at those. I, I wish I could share some with you. They are free. If you don't have a professional email address, get one, it's free. Your first name, dot your last name at whatever.com. You can even have it forward to your other email address. Um, save yourself some time there. The objective. A lot of people put an objective at the top of their resume. We know what your objective is. My objective is to obtain a job in X field. We know. That's why you're applying. And again, it's just kind of seen as a way to beef up your resume, which you don't need to do. Abbreviations. 
Even if you think it's an industry standard abbreviation, I would encourage you to not use abbreviations, especially because you do not know who's going through these resumes before they get to the person who's ultimately going to make that decision. It could be someone from the human resources department who has no idea what these national organizations are. So when in doubt, just go ahead and write the abbreviation. So I have three example resumes that I've really liked. Um, here's a wonderful simple resume. I, I like this one, it's all on one page and it has some fantastic things about it. Okay, some skills here, okay, that's fine. Um, contact information, great. Here we have that this one is actually a little more uh, relevant that this person's not teaching right now, but is looking to be a teacher. And so they have their teaching experience at the top. That's a, it's a great way of showing, hey, this is really what's relevant. So I'm gonna bring it to the forefront. Here's a good thorough resume, a different person. And I like this one a lot as well. It's a two pager. It maybe is a little long for my taste in just a couple areas, but still neat, still clean and shows a lot of experience and a lot of different things. I like bullet points that makes it easy to read. I can tell you when people have whole paragraphs, people tend to not read those things. And here's a nice creative one. I like this one a lot. It shows a little bit of personality in there. So there's a way to show some personality, still remain professional. Again, some skills here, but I like that we have some specific skills, but this is music writing software and music editing software. So that makes perfect sense. For me. So some interviewing tips. I, I'm doing interviews with people all the time and some things that maybe I'd wish I'd known a few years ago. Um, the interview is not really the opportunity for you to show them how qualified you are. If you weren't qualified, you wouldn't have gotten the interview in the first place. So now the interview is your chance to show them who you are. They want to know who you are. They want to know your personality. The purpose of the interview is for them to ask themselves, is this person the right fit for us? Ultimately, they hope that you'll be there working for a while, so they wanna make sure that you're a good fit. Do your research. Uh, I've had a few candidates who have been in interviews and didn't know the, um, maybe the, the things that they should have known, like the grade levels taught at the school or the location at the school. You wanna know those things before going into that interview. Your research, your research should start before you even apply. But as soon as you get that uh, invitation for an interview, that's when your research should really dive in. You wanna know things that are important to that organization. You wanna know um, things that would be important to that job. Remember that while they're interviewing you, you are interviewing them. Hopefully, you will end up at that place for a long time as well. You wanna work there for a while. So you wanna make sure that they're a good fit for you. I think that's incredibly important. So I would always encourage you to have some questions prepared, some sample questions that I've always really liked and that I've used are, what do you look for in your next electrical engineer? What do you look for in your next sales representative? And what do you like most about working at this company? Those are two of my favorite questions, and if nothing else, it'll help start a dialogue. So thank you so much. I am delighted to answer some questions, and I really appreciate your attention through all this.